Hello and welcome to the Edmonton School of Ballet tutorial on lighting design for dance. When choosing lighting for your choreography, there are many aspects of the lighting you should consider. Stage lighting can really add to the vision of your choreography and help convey your message to the audience. There are many functions of stage lighting. It can allow for selective visibility so that only part of the stage is lit at a time. It can add depth, as with side lighting, or create two-dimensional dancers, as with backlighting. Stage lights can draw the audience's focus to a specific area of the stage while distracting them from another. Lights can create a mood. Harsh red light will create a different emotional response than a soft blue light. Lights can establish a location or time of day. For example, you can create sunrises or sunsets or make it seem as though you are outside on a sunny day. It is also possible to use lights in the form of gobos or with a projector to project images and shapes, both on the back of the stage, the white wall called the cyclorama, or psych for short, and on the stage and the dancers themselves. Sometimes light is even used as foreshadowing to trigger an idea in the audience's mind about what will happen next. Planning the lighting for your piece is an important part of being a choreographer. Although you are not a lighting designer by trade, your images, ideas, and plans will help you communicate with your lighting technician or designer and your stage manager. At our studio, you'll be asked to fill out a technical sheet. This sheet includes space for you to give us important information for your piece. Your name, the class, the name of your piece in the music credit is used by the office staff to create a program. They also use the details on the sheet to compile information to be sent to dancers and parents regarding hair, makeup, tights, and shoes. The production manager also makes use of your sheets to help build an idea of the length of the show by adding up all of the times and allowing time for transitions and rehearsals and any possible needs to deal with props, set up and strike of these props, and to communicate with the theatre ahead of time regarding any special needs we have, as well as possibly to readjust the planned show order to accommodate certain setups, or costume hair and makeup changes. The stage manager makes use of your notes to build lighting design notes for her use at the theatre in order to be able to explain to the lighting technician what you want so that the technician can create the looks you have asked for. As well, the stage manager uses your notes to know when to call each of your lighting cues and to get the effect you want. They need to know whether or not your dancers start on or off and also the main colors of your costumes, again to help with the lighting design. Remember, the stage manager does not know your choreography or your vision. It is very important to give them guidance with your lighting sheets. Leaving your sheet blank means that the stage manager and lighting designer have to build a look from scratch with a very limited idea of what your piece is about. All of these people involved in putting on a performance require time to do their jobs well. This is why we ask for your technical sheets to be filled in ahead of dress rehearsals and performances, typically up to two weeks ahead. When you are looking at the lighting design portion of the sheet, you should consider the following. Column number one. This is simply to number your cues. Our sheets have six rows. In many cases, you may have need for fewer than six cues to light your piece. Occasionally, you will need more than six cues. Feel free to add rows or delete them as you need them. Students in Composition 35 are asked to use between eight and 12 cues. However, there is some flexibility there. The quality and purpose of the cues is much more important than the quantity. The second column is titled Time in the Music. This means that we are looking for a music cue for when to call the change of lights. If you are starting in a silhouette and at 20 seconds into the music you want other lights to come up, it is that 0 colon 20 seconds that you write in this box. Remember that there will always be a delayed reaction time between when the stage manager calls the cue to when the lighting technician can actually activate it. 
Also, you should consider whether you want the next cue to start at that time or be fully complete and up at that time in your music. If you want the look complete, you will have to put an earlier time in this column. Remember, this is the time that the stage manager calls your cue to start. The third column is titled Dancer or Movement Cue. This column is where you give the stage manager a visual cue as to what will be happening on stage and when the cue is supposed to be called. For example, the dancers will begin to move out of the clump or all dancers will leave the stage except one. Please remember that although the stage managers at our dance school tend to have a strong dance background and can understand dance cues, they do not know your choreography. So be careful that your movement cues don't require an intimate understanding of your choreography or story. Your stage manager may only have seen your piece once before, or not at all. The fourth column is titled Length of Cue. This column is to tell how long it should take to transition from one look to the next. It is not the amount of time that you stay in the cue. For example, if you want to go from a silhouette to a look with more lights, you might want to have that happen in 3 seconds, but you want to keep this new look for 45 seconds before the next change. What we need here in this column is the 3 second information. As a note, the default at most theatres is 3 seconds. The next column is asking about the light source. We focus on the three main lighting sources we have in all of the theatres we use. Top lights, front lights, and the booms. Or side lighting shining down and across the stage from one wing to the opposite wing. We need you to list which lighting source you are referring to here in each look. You may want to adjust only one of the lighting sources, or two, or all three. The neighboring column asks for color and intensity. In this column you are telling us what you want changed in the top lights, front lights, and side lights. Here is where you would tell us that you would like to increase your side lights from 25 to 50 percent, but not change color. Or perhaps you were backlit only, and now you want to add white front lights at 50 percent. We will talk more about color and intensity shortly. The second last column focuses on the psych, or cyclorama. This is the white curtain or wall at the back of or most upstage point of the stage. Occasionally, this may be covered with a black curtain, or in some theatres, the psych may be able to be raised completely, giving a more raw, industrial feel to the look of the stage. In this column, we need a colour and an intensity. Keep in mind that grey, black and white are not colours that can be created with the lights on the psych. Also, it is a good idea to avoid not lighting the psych at all. If you want the psych to be almost invisible, keep the light soft a pale blue for example, and at as low of an intensity as possible. 10% usually works. The final column on the sheet is for special effects. Please use this column to ask for gobos, spotlights, and breakups. It is also a great space to describe the emotional feeling you are hoping to create with your lighting. A description of the story at that moment in your choreography can also really help the lighting technician and stage manager understand the look you are trying to create and they will then be able to tweak your settings slightly to help get the final look you are hoping for. Now, to help you understand what lights to ask for, here are some explanations, pictures and video. It is important to consider the direction of your lights. Lights can come from the back. When you light your dancers from the back, or they are backlit, you will be using only the psych to create your lights. It will pop the dancer away from the background. It lacks dimension and creates a shadow of the dancer. This silhouette can be effective for short periods. However, consider the shapes and patterns of your choreography before choosing a silhouette. While in silhouette, any three-dimensional looks you've created in the space on the stage will be lost. Top lights are almost always used to light dance. They give dimension, accent the space, and can be used for color washes on the stage. The color washes will change the color of the floor, the costumes in your dancer's skin, so top light on its own can have a very powerful effect on the look you are creating. It is important to note that depending on how the lights are hung, it is possible to use only some top lights to create a focus on a certain area or to have different colors on the stage at the same time. Side lighting is divided into two categories, booms and shins. Shin busters are lights that are attached to the floor and the wings and send light diagonally up and across the stage. They do not affect color, but they do give dimension and are very versatile. 
The lights are in a cone shape, so the closer you are, the less you're lit. We do not use the shin busters at our performances as they are a tripping hazard, and since we have limited stage rehearsal time with lights, the dancers are not prepared for dealing with this added challenge in the wings. We do, however, use booms for side lighting at all of our performances. These lights are hung high in the wings and shine diagonally down and across the stage to the opposite wing. These lights also give dimension and are very effective in creating mood. They can be used with color or as white light. They can be used at different intensities, and like the top lights, they can be used all at once, or only some can be used. It can be very effective to have side lights turned on only from one direction, or to alternate from wing to wing. Front lights are lights that come from the front. There are two types of these, foot lights, which come from the edge of the stage and shine up, and lights that come from the house or the audience. They are also often banks of lights that light from the front of the stage and are hung from the catwalks. These lights shine forward on the dancers. We do not use footlights at any of the theatres that we use. However, the other front lights are very important. They brighten the stage and add light to faces. They also tend to flatten the features as they come straight on. If your choreography is with younger dancers, it is important to use front lights so that the parents in the audience can truly see their young dancer. Front lights are used less often or at a lower intensity in many modern pieces or pieces where you are trying to create an intense or serious feel. Now let's consider color. Color historically came from gels. These colored pieces of see-through plastic were placed in front of a light to create color. Now most theaters use LEDs and the colors are controlled by the computer and lighting board. Color is often shown in the psych. With the advent of LED lights, the color options are almost endless. However, most people typically choose between blues, reds, and yellows, and the combinations these primary colors create. Occasionally, you may not have an exact color in mind, but you may want to ask for warm colors in the reds, oranges, or yellows, or for cool colors in blues and lavenders. It is possible to ask for open white lights as well, which will create a very stark look on stage. The white look does not work well on the psych, so consider a very low intensity pale color here if everything else will be open white. Another aspect to consider is shape. Your light can be given shape by focusing the light differently. If you want a spotlight, for example, you can make the edges of that light hard or soft by focusing the light differently. You can also add shape to your light by lighting only certain areas of the stage. If you use only side lighting and top lighting between two wings, with no other lights on, you can create the effect of a hallway of light. You can also use gobos, or metal cutouts of shapes, in front of the lights to help project an image on the psych or on the stage itself, depending on where the light is facing. The intensity level of your light is also very important. This information is shared with the lighting technician and the computer as a percentage. 0% would mean no light at all, 100% would be lights on full. 100% is extremely bright. Most often lighting cues are kept between 25 and 75%. 25% is very dim and 75% is quite bright. Keep in mind that when you are changing from one intensity to another, you do need a significant change, minimum 20%, for it to be purposeful and noticeable. Making small changes in 5% increments is not very helpful to changing your look. It would be better to do a bigger change over a longer period to have a gradual look to your lighting change. You can have different intensities for all of your different lights, so consider this when creating your looks. It is also important to consider the time of your lights. You can have your lights change very quickly with a snap or zero second cue, as this will be almost instantaneous. This kind of cue can be very effective on a sharp ending pose when you want to go to blackout. Changes that take 20 seconds can also be very effective if you want the change to be so gradual that the audience doesn't really notice or if you are going from a very dim to a very bright look. Typically, the lighting boards are set to a default of three seconds to change from one lighting look to another. It is also possible to consider crossfading. Perhaps you want to move from one spotlight to another, and instead of having one go out and the other come on, you'd like to fade one in while the other fades out. This is called a crossfade. Crossfading can be done with different times as well. One spot could fade out in over three seconds, while your other spot fades in over five seconds. Now we will explore specials and movement. 
Specials are lights that are above and beyond the tops, fronts, sides, and back, although the lights from the specials do come from all of these directions. Specials include gobos. Depending on the theatre we are at, there are options for gobos. Not all theatres have gobos, and we are always limited to a certain number of gobos for each show. Only so many hanging lights are set aside for gobos, so although this has great potential, there are limitations. Spotlights are also considered to be specials. Spots can be hung from the same space as the top lights. These lights will shine directly down on the dancers and be in a very specific area. They cannot be moved throughout the performance. These type of specials can be very effective at creating clear shapes on the stage depending on how they are focused. These can be circles with hard or soft edges. They can even be shuttered to create squares. However, because the light shines straight down, it creates shadows on the dancers' faces. Spotlights can also be created from front lights that can be moved throughout a performance. These lights are more versatile as they can be used more often, can be resized throughout the performance, and can move from place to place with careful planning. They light more from the front, which means that dancers' faces are seen better. However, depending on where the light is hung and where the spot needs to be on the stage, the shape of the spot will be more of an oval than a true circle. Depending on the lights on the rest of the stage at that time, this shape may or may not be an issue to your look. Very often now, the technicians will use a combination of a light from the top and from the front to create the spot, especially if the spot is to cover many dancers. Moving lights can also be very effective. It is now possible at many theatres to have a disco ball spin and create reflections that move around the stage and into the audience. They also often have moving lights that look like lasers that can move around and across the stage and into the audience to create more of a rock concert feel. Often their moving lights can be focused on the psych or the stage. These lights can be open white for a spot or have many programmed shapes that can spin at different speeds and be focused sharply or be out of focus. These can be used to make it look as though water is moving or the clouds are alive on the stage, or that it is snowing, for example. In most theatres now, the lights on the site can also give the illusion of movement. Different areas of the site can be lit with different colours or shades, and then the lights can be programmed to alternate through. This can create a very effective ripple. Hopefully, this has helped you understand the way theatre lighting works for dance at the Edmonton School of Ballet and the many theatres we are lucky enough to perform in. Please consider all of these aspects when you are filling in your lighting design form. Also, for every cue, please ask yourself what the purpose of it is. Is it truly important to the mood you are creating or the story you are telling? Building the lighting cues is a very time-consuming process. It will take much of the dancer's stage rehearsal time to build the cues and have them ready for performance. The more cues there are to set, the more time it will take. We are always excited to help you build lighting cues that truly enhance your vision and add to an amazing audience experience. We look forward to to helping you create your vision in the future. Thank you from your ESB production team.